hello everyone welcome i am ashutosh so today in this video i am going to talk about how to do ci binding using the event rules at an application level uh, in past we saw how to do ci binding uh, at an hardware ci levels that is using the host names the ip addresses fkdn name mac address and that is a default binding mechanism in service now but there are some use cases where we have to override these rules and we need to do a CI binding at a specific application level or a web server level or a database level so that we can do a proper impact analysis uh, and we can configure impact rules in the future. Right. So to do this, we have to do something different in the event rules. We have to override the hardware, the default hardware. So how to do that? I'm going to talk on that. Before I go there, I will show you which uh, JSON we are going to use to create the event. So I'm going to use Postman to go send an event to service now. And this is the body. Uh, and here the main thing which I want to show you guys is the description and the node field. In the description, I'm passing the host name, the hardware host name. And this is my web server, uh, application web server. Why I need this, I will show you in my event rule. Let's go to the, the service which I created. So this is an operator workspace. I, I have created one service called as my service. And here you can see I showed you this in description. This is the Windows server on which this web server is hosted. So basically this particular web server depends on this uh, Windows server. And if I create an event at this, this also gets impacted. But in this case, we want to create event directly on this web server, application web server. If you want to see the details of this, you can always see it here. It's IIS web server. Okay. Let's go to the event rule. So I have created one event rule, name source order as usual. Then the event filter resources plunk. You can see it here. Now, this is interesting section because as I told you, we are going to fetch the Windows server name from the description to override the default hardware rule. Okay. Here you can see in the node, I'm passing, I'm passing uh, the application web server name and here we are fetching the Windows host name. It's really simple. You can, you know that like just select this and then give the expression name. Now let's see the binding mechanism in the binding type. There are ideal three types. One is out of the box, which happens at CMDBCI hardware table level. Second identification and third CI field matching. I will talk about CI field matching in my next video. Now in this case, as we need, we have to do a Binding at an IIS web server level. So I selected binding as CI identification class as IIS web server class. And this part from where this comes. So basically, if I show you, I'm going to remove this. So these are the identification rules which are out of the box available. You can also create your own identifier rules and then use it here. But now I'm going to use name and the class. And I'm just going to pull the node field. So basically this node field came from here and this part container level one, this is really essential to map the event to this particular node. If you don't do this, the event will not be mapped properly. And that's the reason I'm using that here name of my uh, windows host. And that is nothing but this. Let's go and test this. So to test, it's really easy. I'm just going to send the event to service now. Then let's go to event table. It's here. I'm going to open this just to show you how the processing happens. You can see the alert is created. And the most interesting part is the processing nodes. Here you can see how the CI got banded and which event tool was used. So the event tool used is definitely what we created, my demo six. And here it says that it the CI binding happened using the identification engine that is nothing but the identifiers we use and this CCID is nothing but the application uh, IIS web server CCID. 
I'm going to go to alert. You can see this is the alert node which we have in our event which is mapped properly here and you can see the configuration item here. This is a positive scenario I am showing you. There is a negative scenario. If you don't do this, then the CI field will remain empty. Binding will not happen. Even if you pass the node name and if you don't do the event ruling properly. Okay, so you have to do the event rule properly. Let's go to the service. Here you can see now it's in orange because it's like um, major severity. That's the reason it's orange and you can see it is properly mapped, right? So I just wanted to show you this. If you like this video, please let me know if there are any improvements. Please let me know. Do subscribe and keep commenting and keep following. Thank you so much.